Hey, brothers and sisters. Well, it's been a couple of weeks here. Um, I was out of town kind of on a, I guess you'd say it's a working vacation, but um, didn't get a chance to do any videos while I was out. A lot of stuff's been going on, i got to say. I think, um, you know, stuff in Ferguson, just thinking about it, in my mind, it's uh, intentional. I mean, unfortunate situation with having, uh, you know, the police having to use force in that situation. And, and the police officer was acquitted. So I don't want to say any more about uh, that, but you look at what happened. The government poured in um, all sorts of police ride officers, and then you get strange combinations. Like you had the Ku Klux Klan showing up, and you had the new Black Panther showing up, and you can just tell that there's been some orchestration here to try and make the racial divide happen to cause violence which you know then would lead to a reason to have a martial law so you know that was big here in the last few days with that decision as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on but um, this one here just kind of caught me tonight Pope Francis is in Strasbourg and um, you guys know I've I've got concerns about the Catholic Church likely being the base of the end time Babylon. And we go back and we've looked in plenty of videos at all the symbolisms used by the Catholic Church that that points you right back to the original Babylon after the flood, to Nimrod and, and uh, the pagan systems that came out of that. And so Strasbourg, though, I was there a few years ago, <laughs> took a little riverboat tour, and you come back around to the, um, oops, I'm going to look at that in a minute. You come back around to the Parliament building, and it's intentionally designed to look like the Tower of Babel. <laughs> so now <laughs> you've got the Pope um, in the new Tower of Babel, speaking and uh yeah this just i guess one of the obvious things um the other thing i was noticing is is uh the hexagram um i was looking at images for the pope i didn't catch uh, francis with one yet but i didn't really i wasn't drilling in on just him um but i was seeing Lots of, you know, you get the six-pointed hexagram on the Illuminati stuff, which is uh, came up today with uh, some website that was set up about the Illuminati. You guys can go look at that. I'm highly skeptical of that one. Um, but you can see other uses of the six-point star now. In other videos, I said, you know, that this hexagram is steeped in, you know, satanic and occultism, and it definitely goes back to the time, at least of Solomon, and when he was worshipped, when his wives got him to set up altars to pagan deities, uh, that, that's where the hexagram originated, according to what, you know, I had studied, and it's just one more symbol that got sucked into the Catholic Church, and uh, it's powerful because it's you know, as above, so below. It's got that notion. Um, it's guessing uh, pagan use. It also represents fire and water, and uh, also the, um, you know, what do you want to say? The uh, male and female, <laughs> put it that way, to be politically correct. So there's, there's lots of uh, subtle meaning to that, but it shows up in, uh, I'm trying to find here a good image for you guys. Well, it shows up obviously on some of the crosses that are uh, worn. Oh, here we go. Um, it comes up on the hat or the mitre or whatever the hat's here called. 
uh, that the Pope wears, and uh, it's on some of his vestments as well. But here you go. Here's another frontal picture, very prominent, and this you know it's highly linked to Satanism. And you guys followed along here. Well, some <laughs> some of you watched <laughs> my stuff on Gideon, um, and Gideon I got into the tie of going all the way back to the time that was 1200s BC where Gideon was told to pull down his father's altar to Moloch and uh, the grove, the Asherah pole, and uh, offer a sacrifice or an offering. And he did. And it was uh, in Judges 6, I think there, it was said that that was... Uh, um, the god of the Amorites, and we went and looked, and uh, of course those were one of the tribes of the Nephilim. And when you boil this all down, you really get the the head fallen angel Satan with the other fallen angels. You know his his one thing that Satan wanted was to be like God, and we see that in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah, I guess, and that was the promise to Adam and Eve, eat the fruit of that tree and you'll be like God or you'll be gods with the knowledge of good and evil. And that comes right into paganism where you see the black-white symbolism and the checkerboard symbolism. You'll be like God. Well, here we got uh, the star and it's linked to Satanism in the Bible. It's a little bit harder to pick out, but it's definitely there. So... Um, the first one here we'll look at is Amos 5.26. But you have borne the tabernacle of your Molech and Chinyun, okay, statue, idol. And here it says, uh, perhaps corresponding to Piopus or Baal Peor, which Baal Peor is uh, the Baal that was worshipped. I think that was the one worshipped in uh, Judges, actually. So again, there, and the star of your God, which you made unto yourself. And so this Chinyun, Chi, Chiyun, I guess it is, is the same as Ren, Ren, uh, Remfan, sorry. It's spelled multiple ways, Refan, Remfran, and there's actually a version of it in the Septuagint with an A. I think we could look in uh, Brenton's here. Yeah, here we go. You took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your god, uh, Raphan, and the images of them which you made for yourself. And so the star here is a symbol for, you know, Satan. And again, you have to connect those dots going back, but <laughs> that's where we go. That's where we go with this one. Let's go look at Acts uh, 7:43 as well. Uh, go back to the King James here. Acts. 743. Yeah, and this is basically a, a kind of a repeat of that. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And I think this is Stephen here when he's drilling the. Uh, Pharisees right before he gets killed. I think that's what we're talking about. So he's quoting the Old Testament. He's likely quoting this Amos passage here as he's going through it. But here we get, you know, it's that linking of uh, the star, the god Remphan, um, or Molech. And here's a carry you away beyond Babylon. Well, you know, this Satanism stuff came from the original Babylon, like we were saying, and so that's kind of how this stuff all ties together, and how Satanism's, you know, hiding in plain sight. And uh, I think now it's just getting so obvious. Did you guys see the uh, American Music Awards? I didn't watch it, but <laughs> um, I think it's Vigilant Christian. He did. Uh, a YouTube video. I'll let you guys go dig it up. 
breaking down the American Music Awards, and um, you know this was yet one more Luciferian satanic um, worship <laughs> ritual that was done, and uh, he breaks it down. But you'll see the same things again in there. You'll see the black and white checkerboard for as above, so below. Uh, just like we see here with the the uh, triangles as a, as above, so below, and uh, you know the different occult symbolism that was used in that ritual. So, uh, saints, it's you know it's it's time. I don't know how long we're going to be here, but it's certainly time. This stuff is in our face, and uh, you got the Pope standing at the Tower of, of Babel, <laughs> the new Tower of Babel, it just kind of smacked me today. It's like, yeah, that's what it's going to look like. Now, I personally think um, the Antichrist might be somehow um, the Assyrian of the Old Testament, right? And I think somehow he's genetically linked or in some way he is uh, a Raphaim or a Nephilim from that genetic descendancy all the way back to Nimrod. I think that's going to be it because there definitely seems to be a coming full circle with, with God's whole program here. And, uh, you know, you start in the Garden of Eden and you end after uh, uh, Jesus puts down Satan's last rebellion. The earth has already been renewed at the beginning of the millennium and then Satan will have been conquered and so you go full circle in the Bible and I think this is another one of these full circle stories where the original pagan worship system, the original Babylon that's referenced um, in the Old Testament comes full circle in Revelation in, uh, especially in Revelation 17 and 18 where it's called Mystery Babylon. And uh, we'll leave it with that tonight. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, have a good Thanksgiving. Remember, uh, Thanksgiving's probably the only uh, real uh, Christian uh, holiday that's being done, you know, with the intent of, of uh, Jesus. I, I know Christmas is coming up as well, but as you guys know, Unfortunately, the uh, you know the Catholic Church um, Constantine, when he tried to cement together paganism with uh, uh, Christianity, he chose the you know solstice worship. That's um, you know where we get Christmas holiday being in the end of December there. So not saying that we don't celebrate Christ's birth. I'm just saying, you know, Christmas and Easter were unfortunate timing wise picked for pagan reasons. Um, so Thanksgiving is one of our only, uh, if you want to say pure holidays. So uh, there you go. Have a good Thanksgiving saints. And uh, you know what? Um, when you see all these things begin to happen, look up because your redemption draws near.